Well, hello, everybody. We're recording here, Learning Circles, and Jim Harris offered to uh, host a, a session for us about Cairo and CMR um, methodologies and cards for facilitating design, uh, which is uh, stemming from the last discussion that we had here on Learning Circles, too. Uh, I actually got to go, so I'm going to leave it with him to host and, and tell us all about uh, the methodologies there. And later, we'll post the recording online on YouTube. Bye, all. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you ever so much, Enzo. Cheers. Thank you. Hi. Welcome, everyone. I'm Jim Harris. I'm a learning designer at the University of Northampton uh, here in the UK. And my role is to work with people uh, within higher education on the redesign of some of their modules. And what we do is a lot of facilitation around how you're going to approach the use of technology within learning, as well as the uh, the different pedagogical approaches required, as well as looking at ways of redefining your learning without technology, but making it more active. So moving away from the traditional lecture style of transmission of information towards a more active and participative approach to the learning process. So what we uh, what we have is two things that we're gonna cover. One of them will then cover elements of the cards that you'll see in the other lab. Um, if there's anyone who wants to jump in and, and have a chat, um, yeah, let's let's go for it. I mean, I'm, I'm okay to, to keep this pretty free form. Um, I'm gonna be posting some links. I want this to try and be as interactive as possible um anthony i know i can see from your message you're going to have to drop off so i'm i'm interested in following up on what you said are you going to be able to jump in if i give you a uh, give you an opportunity to come in on one of the chairs just the, in the approach that you said of your your organization's approach to to learning design and instructional design development <laughs> yeah exactly what approach um, and that's that's one of the biggest questions when you are working with the subject matter expert or an academic. Sometimes it's it's just a, a simple thing to say, well, let's just throw technology at it and let's let's hope that a solution sticks. Or we also have th this concept of, OK, well, I've seen someone use it there so we can use that ourselves and let's let's use that over in in uh in this way and that's what i wanted to pick up with um something anthony said that we we don't have an approach so <laughs> and it's good i mean you're you're feeding it to me um and and i was driving home and i was just trying to think about this idea of when we when we start thinking about the use of technology and just how far we come it it reminds me of the the fact that we've just sent that satellite to juno uh juno to um circuit circle saturn um no it's not saturn is it it's jupiter so it's regardless we've sent a whole bunch of tech out there and i thought wow we've come a huge distance we, we've come from you know early flight all the way up and i thought actually no 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 the principle is a lot older than that the principle of getting something and throwing it up in the air to do that's that's old. I mean, even monkeys do that. They 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 pick up, they throw it. There's an intention. There's something. There's some reason. There's some mechanism or task that we're looking to use that technology for. We're looking to to harness it to to solve a problem, and that's where we start to get into problems of oh, someone's used technology for that. They've they've used Raspberry Pi for that, or they're using virtual reality for that. Their their tablets are the biggest thing. The amount of tablets that may be bought in when actually they didn't need it just for the sake of technology for the sake of we using it because that's where i was interested um, is a way of technology and it's enhancing through the use of technology or it's transforming through the use of technology and up here for you. So our approach is, let's see, my connection is just dropping out. It was developed by um, Dr. Uh, Prentadura, and the approach to it is about substitution, augmentation, 
modification and redefinition. And these are different stages of the use of technology. Have an image here and I'll share some of these around. And the idea is that you can pitch and identify the use of technology within learning defined within one of these levels. And so the, the idea is, and I'll share you this. Here we go. Okay, it should be coming across to you now. Okay, can everyone see that image? Just drop a, a tick or something in it. Okay, cutting out. Okay, yeah, gone on to one five, two seconds, two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you should be able to hear me now, and the connection should still be yeah. Okay, so uh, there's just a classic example there of me trying to use, thank you ever so much for that, that link there, Marco. Uh, now, the, the thing is that when we look at substitution, when we look at what are you using the technology for, the classic example is you're in class and you're expecting someone to, to write down some notes or write a hand uh, piece, and they use a word processor instead of handwriting. You're just substituting one form of technology for another. You're not actually adding in huge amounts of variation or transformation. You're just enabling them to do what they would do normally using another piece of technology. The next stage up then is augmentation, and that's where you're starting to use things such as, well, if we needed them to write, maybe they could write on the Google Doc. So the Google Doc can be shared. The Google Doc will allow various people to collaborate and, and make multiple edits. But essentially, you're still doing the same thing. You're using a piece of technology that replicates something, and, and it just varies what they can do currently on a piece of paper. So you're just enabling them to do the tasks that they were previously doing in a slightly more technology enhanced way. The next level is when we move up to modification. And this is where we can start moving into the use of technology, such as instead of asking a student to, to write down a, on a piece of paper or to write in a Word document or to write in a, a shared document, to actually write on a blog. And the idea of the blog being that actually they can encourage them uh, to share the ideas beyond just the physical piece of paper that they can only share within a small community to then video so you could add a video piece in clearly you can't do that on a piece of paper although you could do that on a word document but the idea is that you're wanting to use it for sharing and circulating and the final level the redefining of it what is it that you're expecting them to do and this is the creator space this is where you're actually getting them to generate artifacts and maybe they make a video and the video is a representation of whatever it was that they were going to write but the, you're putting it up and you're encouraging them to start using that to allow people to edit to uh, not to edit to comment on to share it to put alternatives up the technology builds upon the task that you're looking to use and that's where we always look to see whether or not instead of um, this goes back to internal discussions, we have learning designers who work on the pedagogical approaches that people are using technology. And we have learning technologists who are looking at the various different ways that technology can be used and the technology that's out there. And they had an issue about how do we make sure that people are dealing with the right 
type of technology and the right approach is. We can list all the different technology that we've got available. We can list all the different functions that our, our virtual learning environment has got or our learning management system has got. We can list them all. But how will someone know that they want to use a blog? How will someone know that they want to actually pick out that particular aspect of video creation or the, the commenting on videos as part of an assessment process, for it's formative or summative? How will people do that if all we're doing is we're just listing a load of names? I mean, there's, there's a brilliant thing. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. It's a, a video um, of someone giving a presentation just showing how insane the, the process of giving a lecture is and they effectively just say chicken all the way through it chicken 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 and the idea is that actually that delivery is doing nothing but literally just saying the word chicken to you no matter how many graphs you're using no matter how much uh, kind of scope there is that you're building into the the interactiveness of it or showing pictures of chicken so chicken no matter what you're doing all you're doing is just transmitting information and then you start thinking about that's what we're doing with our learning online. If that's all we're doing in the classroom, is that the most effective use of the, the technology that we've got available to us? You could do virtual chickens. You can see where this is going. Actually, it's what, they, what the intended purpose of the student in that in environment is going to do with it. Would, are you asking them to define what a chicken means to them? Are you asking them a specific task that revolves around chicken? That idea of being able to say to someone, I need you to define and to prove you are saying this is where I've, I've completed pages and be thinking about this is what you're needing to do this is a set of instructions that you need to go away and do and i can understand that would be quite difficult in a situation where you're faced with compliance testing where you're dealing with the fact of it has to be been exposed to it and it's great to see that um uh, craig is is here i don't know how to add you on craig if that's something i can do um but I'm going to really, really upset you because this is, this is the point of having XAPI and, and the ability for, for you to say that actually learning can exist outside of the simple, can I track the button clicks that go through? But actually, can I see how the students are being active? There we go. Can I see how the students are being active within the environment and within the context of the task that I'm asking them to, to engage with? So I think Craig coming in. I'll carry on with this. And when you start moving away from transmission and when you start moving away from substitution, classic one for me is PowerPoint. When we're moving from PowerPoint slides, click, 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 when tutors clicking through to PowerPoint slides that are being converted to articulate storyline, and all you're doing is click 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 you're just really using substitution for something you're not moving it or elevating any higher all you are doing is allowing there's blocks by the firewall um cray all you're doing is replicating using technology in a slightly different way now the danger comes when someone comes into the office and says i've got this and i've seen this and i want to do it now you can be in a position of well what is that going to enable you to do differently how are you going to be able to, to see what you're doing and the task you're doing differently with the use of that technology? So someone walks in and says, I've got a, an iPad and I on the iPad that I want all the students to have access to. I've got a voting system and I want all the students in the room with a voting system. Fine. Fine. OK. Yeah, I can see the benefit of that. OK, but why can't we just have a show of hands? What is the technology actually adding in at that stage? Craig's having problems getting in on the video chat. That's down to his network settings. I had a problem earlier on, I had to physically plug in the cable. That's a network setting. The use of the technology beyond the scope of everything's working absolutely fine into a, how much will the technology now be a barrier to the learning? Actually, it didn't need to be there. You didn't need to use that technology. So that, again, is one of the things to start thinking about when you're looking at how people will start to use the technology within the learning spaces, within the situations that they are encountering um, 
any kind of new technology and, and i was in preparation for this i kept on thinking yeah but virtual reality where does that fit on that scale i mean it it could sit somewhere and i'm gonna i'm gonna hand over now to if you bear with me a couple of seconds sing amongst yourselves if you wouldn't mind so i'm gonna go to something that i'm gonna share with you guys and i now want you to click this link when i send it through so if you wouldn't mind for a couple of minutes uh we're just going to say until five two I want you to click on that link and that's going to take you across it should do to what we call a padlet and you'll see on that padlet that you have uh learning circles hangout samar and you've got listed across them is back to front but you've got each of the tasks set up and what i want you to do is in the bottom right hand corner you should see that there's a small pinkish reddish circle with a pin it and that's some box to add in text so i want you to see if you're able to post in virtual reality and see where you think virtual reality sits under each of these is it substitution virtual uh, virtual reality you're just providing people with an alternative means of something you could have done face to face is it augmentation because in virtual reality you could be doing other things and i see we've got someone coming in okay so i'm going to sit back for a moment i won't see I, I can try i mean i've got on my kit here i could, could give it a go but let's see so that's the task i want you to do for five minutes i'm not going to talk i'm going to come back i'm just going to have a, a look if you don't want to contribute that's absolutely fine so just feel free to to pop on there someone's written as i can see virtual reality and i just want you to type right in into your box underneath the box whether you think it's substitution augmentation modification or redefinition so think about the use of virtual reality whether it be in the replay of a scenario whether it be in creating um, an opportunity for something and actually think about using it in the context of that redefinition something that we try to do in the classroom but the technology allows us to go beyond the constraints of what we're able to do okay so we've got yeah substitution redefinition augmentations coming in yeah okay 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 so some of the fact that um virtual reality could be each of those now the interesting thing obviously with that and someone's just written uh, substitution and augmentation um let's come back i mean that that link is going to be available please feel free but the interesting thing with that is obviously it's it it fits all of them so what is the thing that's going to define the difference between each of them and it's going to be the task how are you using how are you planning to use it how are you going to set up using that particular uh, tool that technology in order to um in, in order to to engage students in something different are you going to be doing a virtual reality tour of the heart clearly you cannot do that in real life um unless it gets really messy are you then looking at how um we are able to have a virtual language school whereby yeah physically we could do it but the restraints of physicality are the issue therefore we are able to substitute and augment that rather than just picking up the phone and, and giving them a ring we have lots of different elements of that thank you for posting that that picking pdf there's there's a video clip and I'll, I'll send it through as well but again it's it's that element of the context is is the king we have a an approach which is very much about the development of your courses around context and 
the way that we approach that is through this Cairo process, which is called uh, is called Cairo, which is creating aligned interactive educational resource opportunities. Interactive educational resource opportunities. It's not creating resources. It's the resource opportunities. And the approach that we have, and I'm going to share this and it was shared out earlier, is it's a team based approach. And the plan is that in groups, you would work through this document I'm going to send over to you. P please feel free. This document is uh, covered by Creative Commons license, which allows you to, um, to copy it and modify it. But as long as you keep the uh, Creative Commons um, logo in there, which shows that it's licensed to us, um, it's an attributed license. Um, the the thing with it is that if you are working on what is the task, what is the context, you need to start defining that. So I'll very briefly go through the planner. Feel free to come back, spend some time on this. This is shared. You can put some comments in. This particular one is really defined for, um, for this group. So it's a long document, but this doesn't just end up as a product uh, project uh, specification. This actually ends up in a situation whereby your team members will know exactly what they plan to do. They will be in a stage of having created the uh, the environment, the learning environment that they happen to, to want to develop. And then there will be a, a reflection process, um, a reality checking going on. And this is the working document through all of those stages. So there are parts of it which will make sense. There are parts of it which will um, need to be extracted or ignored. But the idea is that working through this document, we're going to start with a pre-meeting. Um, and the pre-meeting is really about the logistics in the background. It's also about identifying um, using some of the cards. We didn't go over the think cards. If anyone's had a look through those, the coaching, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Um, what do you know about the process? Um, do you think there's any barriers? Those kind of questions to really start defining people into a, right, don't think about the technology, think about what it is that we're trying to develop. And this can be used for developing online learning. It can be developed for, for short activities. It can be developing a complete, what we call a program or a course, which has multi-module delivery within it. So this is a scoping document that fits a lot of variation. It's a Google Doc. So the idea is that people can be going into the document and sharing it and working collaboratively. So there's an element of being able to use the process and the document in working on a shared document and sharing the ideas in a virtual space as well as in the physical space to actually get people who may not have ever had a reason to use a shared document to actually work together on it. So there is an opportunity to to really bring forward people's skills in. OK, well, I've heard about Google Docs, but I don't know about them. Well, this is a safe environment. As learning designers, we facilitate people through the process. And as you can see here, because it's a shared document, people can add things before the meeting. You could add things after or during, depending on how the setup is going to be. As we work through, we, we record various logistical things of the actual Cairo workshop, who's attended. Um, very keen that it's a team based approach. So we have a lot of different teams who work with us. I don't know whether or not you would have uh, resource developers or you've got people who may have worked on some other programs. So they may be champions of online learning or of e-learning. And actually, you want their expertise in, even though they may not be the subject matter expert. And because it's a team approach, it brings everyone together. You don't have everyone who is purely a subject matter expert, but it's about wrapping around a team of support for the development of this learning experience. So again, we're looking at people who can bring something to the table and bring something to the task to then focus the design. And we work through in this, uh, within higher education, we use it to, uh, to develop the, um, the some elements of the, the standard documentation we have. So we have um, learning outcomes, which are defined at different levels of education, but each equally a benchmark uh, against national standards. So how do we make sure that whatever we're developing will lead to the learner being able to demonstrate the learning outcomes that are required of graduate 
in that particular area. Again, you could map them to learning outcomes that already exist, but there is an opportunity to really talk about them. Are, are these learning outcomes that we need to define? Are these ones we've inherited and we don't think are quite right? Or is the nature of the subject shifted and we need to be testing other things? That's an opportunity for the team to sit together in the blueprint stage and look at those learning outcomes. Before that stage, we do have the process of defining a mission and we've moved into using the uh, the mission statement phase, the, the vision casting as a method of getting the people who, if they're multi delivery teams, getting them to really rationalize and compete, write a tweet about how you would express the course to someone who's never studied it and doesn't have any awareness of it. Write that tweet and then we share it on the document. And actually, then people start to see the variations. I didn't think of it like that. Or I didn't think we should cover that or that's a really good thing. I wish I'd have learned that or thought of that. And we can then merge them, synthesize those together into something that will define the team's mission for this. Again, we move into the values and set the, the scene for how we're going to progress forward into the learning outcomes at this stage. After that, we then move into the, the stage of um, alignment. So how we align what we're doing with the, um, the assessment and the teaching and learning strategy. So this comes from uh, the work of Biggs and you'll see in that document, there's lots of references to the background research and the theoretical approaches. The, the idea being that you have this uh, constructive alignment around the learning outcomes, the assessments that prove that you've met the learning outcomes and the teaching and learning strategy that has has led you to be able to demonstrate those. And with that ability to, to really pick those together, um, you then also can start to see that actually the context is not around content, but it's more around the, the context of the learner, putting the learner in the center of it. What do we need to provide to the learner in the ways of, of support, of knowledge, and understanding and that the understanding they're going to have and build for them to be able to address the uh, the assessment and then also to meet the learning outcomes. And you can see at this point that someone might have come in saying, I want to do videos. I want my students to submit videos as part of the assessment. Really? OK, so let's make sure that the work that it's going to take for the student to actually engage in the video is going to and the development of the video is actually going to be linked to the assessment. You know, is, is that one of the key things? Is it about being able to communicate your and articulate your ideas in a certain way and be able to present them to a range of different people? Or is it just because you like the tech and you want them to do it? Because actually, if it's not something that's going to be a skill that's going to be assessed, then it's going to be difficult to prove the alignment of it. And actually, we're going to end up in a situation where students may be spending an awful lot of time learning something and we're not even going to be assessing it summatively. There may be an element of, yeah, well, they need to be creating something. OK, well, let's go back and look at whether or not that was a requirement of your learning outcomes. And let's go right the way back up to then see at a program level where we do some alignment work. Is that something that is covered by other people or are you in a situation where everyone has jumped on the same thing? We then also can look into at that stage later on where actually the use of the technology fits within our teaching and learning strategy and within our assessments and to see whether or not we are just substituting them for something else. At this stage, it's just about the context of the learner and about the context of what is it that we're trying to achieve, not how do we expect to use technology to achieve that. So moving through on the planner, we then come into what we define as a storyboard. And this is where, if you were part of last week's or the, the previous session where we used Poplet, we have a, a paper prototyping tool effectively, which maps out the learner journey, massive sheets of, of A3, uh, sorry, A, A2, A1 paper, post-it notes of different colors to then define what we are trying to achieve. So we will say the topics and the learning outcomes, um, we can then go into, OK, well, how are we going to deliver that? What's the, the standard way? Is it a workshop? Is it going to be online? Is it going to be student led type facilitation? Uh, is it going to be debates? Is it going to be a lot of effort from the, the tutor into this area? And from there, we'll start moving into a an area of what kind of resources are we going to add in here? 
And then also some, whether we're gonna use some eTivities, Julie Salmon's approach to eTivity design, and the online learning, whether it's pre-work that feeds into the face-to-face -face session, whether it re it's something that in class, they're gonna be engaging with technology. So in class, I want them to use a Padlet and I want them to post up the responses to what I've just presented them in the class. And this is again, moving closer towards the use of technology to be more active in the classroom. And so actually, can we use that in a way whereby it's not just the same thing as, well, we could have put the four things on the board and then got people to come up with a post note and stick them on. So there's an element of substitution, but actually it could be find an article or find a video that underpins this particular principle and post that into it. And at that point, we're moving closer towards uh, away from the enhancement and more into the transformation because you then have an opportunity for the students to be able to then have created something to actually have built something within the environment and then outside of the classroom there is the opportunity for them to go back and to reflect and to critique but extend their learning beyond the the classroom through the use of that technology so after we've done our storyboarding and we've made sure that we we are in the right stages we we then do an element of substitution we put it more formally into a poplet and the poplet then gives us the opportunity to start moving things around we could have moved them around on the, on the post note but sometimes it's in the reflective process you come back and think actually yeah the assessment wasn't quite right and actually i think that the critical friend who can come in can say why have you put that before this why shouldn't we move these around so after that we start moving into the build phase um, so once we've agreed that and they, we've had some form of review, we can then start looking at how do we transform, transform from what we had as our paper prototype of our planner into something which is the realisation of it. And so the next phase of it is really about building and creating. In the storyboard phase, that's where you can start adding in the tools and the technologies. How and what is the purpose of them doing this particular thing? why do you want them to use a blog or how are you going to get them to reflect weekly basis what they've learned a blog would be suitable for that and that's where as a multi-team approach we can say don't think about the technology think about the the tasks that you want the students to engage with and that will allow the students to move their way through each of the elements and not feel that hang on why am i doing a blog now it's got nothing to do with the subject and and now you're getting me to do a video piece and submit that and you're not giving me any feedback on it and using technology in all the wrong ways just for the sake of the technology we can really see with that storyboard the alignment of the use of technology the build phase then sees the realization of that and actually the creation of it and you're defining at the end of the storyboard what type of interactivity you want to have added in is it going to be something that is just an individual piece or is it going to be something that is more portfolio led or is it something which you feel that there's a nice opportunity for a blend of different technologies in here for different appropriate reasons so that Cairo process is then moving towards that having created the aligned and interactive education resource opportunities and the resource opportunities can be found assets they can be reusable learning objects or open educational resources that really bring in an, an underpin but the importance is to move away from simply i'm presenting you something here watch a video okay you've watched a video what are you going to do now okay well after they've watched that video the point of giving them that video was this and i need them to come away having understood an or given a crit of it depending on the level on Boom's taxonomy that you, you think that is what I need them to do. Now give me the technology that allows them to achieve that and achieve that in a way at which the technology doesn't become the barrier or it doesn't become the newfangled thing. We've had some experiences before where someone's really liked a, a particular tool and they've used it everywhere. And it was great. Well, this is great, it's whizzy and nerve thing on a really minuscule level of yeah, 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 it's great, it's great, it's great. But from the students and the learners' point of view, 
yeah, hang on, all I'm getting is the same technology. Uh, I'm not seeing something move. I, I'm not seeing any progression. It's just yet another use of it, yet another video that I have to critique, yet another thing that I have to create. You can imagine it that for some people, getting people to, to come away from the screen, away from the e-learning, to go out to the workplace and then give a, a two or three minute video piece of something they've just observed within ethical bounds and say, actually, this is what I want to do. I want to submit it. Well, OK, that's fine and it will be interesting. But when it gets the hundredth video that they have to create, that's when the technology is then going to start being overutilized. And actually, what was the purpose of it? Are you using the technology for the task that was required or are you using the technology because it was there and because it's something you like and you think that people like it? And that for, for me is really one of the things that blending together the SAMR model and looking at what are you trying to do, what tasks are you trying to do and what tasks can the technology do and find out whether or not all you're doing is purely substituting the technology for something that could be done quite easily somewhere else or are you actually going to be using it at a level at which you can really, really push uh, the students and move them through various levels of cognition to actually really be able to do things that are far beyond just doing it with the basic tech or not even the tech enabled pen and paper there was no way that they would be able to do that and that is why i think we it was interesting to to have this opportunity to talk about that, those two approaches talk unfortunately i tried to make it as interactive as i could there's no no kind of enzo giving me any questions and it was unfortunate that Craig wasn't able to jump in, but that's that's really it. I'm I'm going to kind of finish up from my point of view. If there's any questions that anyone's got, please feel free to, to jump in. We will have this recording available. The links are available. You can read some of the background stuff. The Cairo Planner has an awful lot of in-depth information. The deep dives are very, very useful. So even if the whole thing looks like a massive document, skip through to the big blue boxes and you'll see some in interesting things in there that should be appropriate to anyone who's involved, involved in learning processes and the development of any kind of learning using technology. So I'll open this now. Any questions, please feel free to jump in. If not, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking at you, which I don't like doing. But thank you ever so much for everyone who participated in the uh, um, in the Padlet. And also, that's a, a free tool. That's well worth having a look at and using. OK, I'll give it a couple more minutes. Thank you. That's very kind. No, we all wrapped. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you ever so much for, for all your time. Anthony, thank you ever so much for, for staying on as long as you did. Um, yeah, have a great weekend, everyone. And uh, yeah, never stop learning. Thank you. <laughs>